clapping, I'm talking about you. This is my convention. What is happening to it? Defending against the modern day downgrade as we head downhill at breakneck speed. Speaking truth, exposing the lies. This is Polemics Reports. You know why you do it. You don't do it because you get paid well. You don't do it because men love you. You do it because you love men and because more than that, you want to honor God. From a location somewhere in the eastern Montana prairie, this is your host, J.D. Hall. Hello, and you're listening to Polemics Report for December 16, 2021. We are quickly approaching the holiday that Spurgeon despised because it is Christ Mass. Is it a papist holiday? I don't know. I had a lady get mad and leave the church because we had a Christmas tree. Maybe that could be a patron question. Is it just a redecorated Asherah pole? I'm bringing up stuff that has no business being brought up in the intro to the program, but this is my program, so I talk about what I want to. That's why people listen. Uh, and every single day, myself or David, our co host, gets emails from people saying, You know what I like about Pulpit and Pen Protestia Polemics Report? I feel like I'm the only sane person left, and this allows me to know there are other people thinking through these questions as well. And this is an important question for us to ask, not the Christmas tree thing necessarily, but the question of, is this biblical? Is this right? Or is this wrong? What does the Bible say about this topic? And so that's what Polemics Report has been doing since 2013. We've been asking the question, is this right or is this wrong? Is this, is this biblical uh, or is it, uh, is it, is it not? Um, uh, and my original audio is uh, on. So do I need to change some other settings, David? No, it's great. Okay. So... Um, in the last program, you might notice that it was a little bit different because what we did, we were short on time. I was short on time because it's muzzle loader season because killing animals is a priority to me because uh, it's how I exude my toxic masculinity by killing helpless and defenseless animals. <laughs> and so um, now let's say uh, hypothetically – I'm chasing a rabbit here, if that's okay, David. Yep. Um, in terms of hunting defenseless animals, too, so that I, I can exude toxic masculinity. Um, let's say, just hypothetically, a guy goes hunting today and sees a group of deer that run off, but one is not running, one is walking. And you use your muzzle loader to put one through him and he doesn't feel it and you use your muzzle loader to put another one through it and he doesn't feel it and it is very clearly sick and ill uh, because there is a disease called blue tongue that kills deer uh, white tailed deer and then the deer has to basically um, die slowly over the course of weeks through starvation or days through dehydration until at which point while yet alive coyotes devour its bowels and eat it alive or you just get a bullet to the head now you tell me which one is more humane i i don't know but i i suspect a few people just turn the podcast off <laughs> Like, nope. <laughs> I said hypothetically. <laughs> I'm trying People to eat dinner realize, here. I'm, okay, I'm okay, listen. <laughs> listen. Okay. All right. This, I, I, this is my cathartic moment of the week. The Plymouth report. <laughs> I, let me go. I, I'm just going to chase the rabbit, and then we'll see where it goes. <laughs> chase the, chase the uh, wounded, there is uh, not, sick elk or whatever. <laughs> there is not a more humane way for an animal dot to die than a bullet to the to the heart or vitals or head. That's true. If if you've ever seen the Nature Channel and you realize that deer have found I found dead deer. They did not die easy deaths. All right. 
Um, hunters do our part to maintain the um, Dominion mandate. And anyways, that said, this program is about Jesus. I'm going to get back to the Dominion mandate. We have more to talk about, including Mike Stone, I think, mm -hmm. um, and a lot of Patreon questions. We're going to try to keep this at an, at an hour. But um, we are planning, um, if you are in the Montana area, a capital rally January 6th called the People's House Rally that uh, I don't think I'll be leading necessarily, although I end up leading stuff I don't intend to. I am sponsoring it through Montana Daily Gazette to demonstrate this is our house. Um, and there's a significance to that date. You can check that out. <laughs> also, the Great Falls Tribune wrote a terrible hit piece about me that I talked about on Montana Gazette Radio, which you can find by going to khdnradio.com and clicking the archives. And it's in the first 20 minutes of the program. And they get this, David. Here's what happened. I'm speaking at a pachyderm event that you weren't there for because it was December 4th and um, they're having prime rib. It's a really classy thing they put together and uh, in comes the reporter for the great Falls Tribune, which is a liberal rag publication. And uh, noticeably because she has a giant camera and also because she's the only one wearing a mask. Okay. So um, I go over to her and I say, and Jim White is a witness of this. I say, I'm, you, know, you know who I am, right? And she's like, yeah. And I said, um, I'm going to say some things about your paper that aren't pleasant in my speech. <laughs> but you seem like a perfectly lovely young woman. And I don't want you, I don't want you to take anything personal. It's a job, I'm going to guess, it's a job that you had to take because you need to pay the bills or you're just out of journalism school and you're trying to get a start, but I'm going to like rip your paper to shreds and just don't take it personal. And then I looked over at Jim who works for me and I said, get her prime rib, Coke, whatever she wants on, on me. And then I proceeded to rip the great false tribune to shreds. Then they did an article that did not even mention the pachyderm event. It was an article about this, the local sheriff who changed from Republican to Democrat. Get this, because he was told during the COVID crisis by the Democrats, quote, all you seem to care about is the Constitution. All right. <laughs> so he's like, I guess I'm a Republican because that is all I care about is the Constitution. So the Great Falls does this hit piece and they call and they're like, we found a picture of him giving you a medallion. And I'm like... What, so what's the, what's, I don't understand. What is this? What, what does this have to do with the event the other night? And I asked, I'm like, you're running a hit piece on Jesse Slaughter, aren't you? That's his name. Sheriff Slaughter. Cool name. Mm -hmm. I'm like, you're running a hit piece on Slaughter, aren't you? Oh no. We don't, well, we're just curious why he'd give you a medallion. And I'm like, well, military officers and politicians carry those to give to eight year olds. I have no mm -hmm. idea where that is. I don't want to ins I don't mean to insult slaughter, but I have no idea where that coin is. Probably the trash. Um, it's not like a keepsake. The military does it I, too. They're little like we do challenge coins. They're, they're, they're tokens right. where you, you don't want to have to actually write a like legit award or something like that, but you want to show someone some gratitude. It's it's a neat thing. Right. I have a I bunch drove, of them. I drove you know. six hours to show up to speak. So he, he gives me a medallion, mm -hmm. and and you know who gives a crap. So the article comes out, and the title is um, something like. Uh, sheriff's relationship with homophobic pastor has LGBTQ plus community concerned. And then we, you know what we found out today? Um, their paper edition didn't come out because it's dying, which is what I pointed out in the talk. They're dying. Uh, they didn't have the money to even put it in print today. I don't know what the point of that story is, but I, I think it's something along the lines of uh, God's vengeance is always better than ours. Speaking of God's vengeance, we're all due vengeance. 
So I've thought about this lawsuit that I'm in a million times. Give to it, please, um, to support us. Write a check to Fellowship Baptist Church. It's Christmas time. Be generous. And write on the information line, Liberty Defense Fund, okay? And um, today I was going through, uh, I forget what you call it, uh, deposition, not depositions, uh, discoveries with my attorney. And I got to do it more tomorrow before I, I have my surgery and, uh, on the road. Um, and I thought, what if I was asked, do you think homosexuals are going to hell? David, what, what do you, what do you guess my answer is going to be? Yes. Yeah, I'm going to un- point at the judge. Yes, I'm going to point at the judge, who's Jewish, and I'm going to say, I think he's going to hell. And I'm going to look at the jury, and I'm going to say, I'm betting most of them are going to hell. I think everybody's, almost everybody, is going to hell, unless they put their faith and trust in Jesus Christ. So it's not like, oh, you're bigoted towards a particular group. Excuse me, I am bigoted towards everyone. It's not prejudicial towards a specific demographic as much as CRT would like you to believe. We believe, as Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man goes to the Father but by me. And that no matter whether you are a homosexual or a straight guy, you need Jesus. And so God sent his son to live a life we should have lived, earning for us righteousness, dying on a cross that we deserve, taking our punishment. And he died in the place of believers so that we could receive the reward he earned by the righteousness that I just mentioned. And that is exchanged by God's grace alone through faith not by works, alone in Christ, not marrying the saints or your mama. Alone in Christ alone. That's the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And that's more important than anything else that you're going to hear me and David rant about at the world's most famous polemics podcast in the history of mankind. So that being said, uh, David Morrill, did I leave anything out of the gospel? I got the gist of it, didn't I? Even amidst my deer talk, mm-hmm. animal rights activists drive me nuts. They think, you know, you know what? What's ironic is they they're like, you know, uh, when when I hunt, at least I use a bow. Have you ever bow hunted, David? Bow hunting, no, but bow hunting, as far as I understand, can be far more violent in terms of its effect on the animal than, than using a rifle oh it is it can it's be like, that's the like old, saying i i hunt oh, absolutely a spoon, you know if you hunt with a with a <laughs> rifle and it's a good shot the deer drops if you hunt with a bow i have chased deer i kid you not a mile and a half um and it is a slow agonizing painful death and the only exception is uh, i was hunting antelope this year and they're curious creatures, so I turned on my uh, my uh, blinkers. They were on the they were on property. I couldn't. I didn't have permission to hunt. <laughs> did you I say? Need, I, didn't you say you turned on your them. blinkers? They were attracted to it, moved to it, and you, you had like a you know a close range. You know? Well, because <laughs> it was a mechanical broadhead of two and a half inches or whatever, that's bigger than a bullet, and it died quicker than it would have any other way. But if it's just a typical shot from a bow at forty yards, that's you, animal rights activists are stupid. They're dumb. Yep. Um, and so let's go back to the min, uh, Dominion mandate real quick because I can talk about whatever I want to. Um, the command is to be fruitful and multiply, to spread over all the earth, and then to take dominion over it and to subdue it. Those three things. All right. Now think about all the problems in our country, all the problems in our society. All right. And granted, I may not be the most focused right now because I'm kind of looking at the clock, making sure I go to bed on time. <laughs> but you should have probably told me to keep well, you on a on a you know short leash or something. It's all right. Yeah. Okay. W- Democrats and Republicans, like we know, there are slightly more Democrats than there are Republicans by voter registration. Okay. 
But when it comes time to people for to actually vote, it's closer to 50-50. It's pretty much is 50-50. Because uh, Democrats are, you know, these are people that go to just get red, you know, they register their vehicle and they got motor voter. So they sign up as Democrat, but the Republicans have a tendency to be more informed and, and more involved. And so uh, it's about 50, 50. Okay. For the voting public, imagine if we all had three, four, five, ten 10 kids in 18 years, if we were fruitful, uh, would they even be able to stand a chance election wise so all these problems um absolutely would be cured if we would follow the first dang command god gives in the scripture i mean last night we covered uh from grudem systematic don't send me hate mail about using <laughs> grudem i explain the problems with all right it. i won't but it's it's actually it's actually a pretty good it's much better than frames in my opinion um, for the for the casual for 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 the for the, for the typical person, um, so the if we were fruitful and we educated our own children in twenty years, Republicans would own this country like you could not possibly imagine. So, do you know my daughter Seth Ray? Or excuse me, not Seth. I called did you. You call me Seth. <laughs> I did. Have you met my daughter? You haven't. Nope. Met my, you haven't. No, because we didn't get that far. We didn't get that far uh, east when I was up there. Yeah, but Seth got to meet her at the airport, mm -hmm. which is a pretty uh, cool uh, act of providence. But she was trained by the John Birch Society through Freedom Project Academy. Um, if you teach your own kids, or you make sure that they're not taught crap by government schools whose unions are run by communists, um, all of our problems are solved. Just that easy. Yeah, the teaching part is really important. You can't you can't just procreate because you see a lot of conservative parents procreate. You, you don't teach your kids end up you, being liberals anyway. You can't teach them a Bible story and then give them un unlimited access to Netflix. I mean that that part's true, right? Like you can't let the world educate them more than you do. So you, you have to you have to train a child up in the way that they should go. And when when they're old, they'll not depart from it. So so we we have this this command to be fruitful and multiply, which would solve all of our dang problems. So let's focus more on having babies as Christians and then spread out over all the earth. Now, where do you think I'm going to go there? Cities, dang yep. cities, the gospel <laughs> of the sad. Don't get me started on cities. I'll just quit there. <laughs> spread out. Spread out. If city, if a city builds up, it goes liberal. If the city spreads out, it goes conservative. That's just a rule of life. And then, and then take dominion over it, which means um, kill wolves, cut down trees, drill for oil, uh, and mine for copper. All right? or cobalt. Uh, that's the dominion mandate. The reason why the world is in such a mess, think about it. it it's it's it, it, obviously the biggest reason is Jesus Christ. They are not treating as king. But secondly, they haven't, Christians even, are not following the first command God gave. And we're told to meditate upon God's law. That should be a delight to us that we love God's law. And I, we'll try to get we we we'll, we'll get to the questions tonight. I promise. But, and and then the Mike Stone topic. But when I let's say I preach a sermon, ten sermons in a row about God's law, and the communion part at Fellowship Baptist Church is the gospel. You don't get it in the sermon because the passage is not about the gospel. The passage is say from Deuteronomy or Exodus. It's the law. Okay. Somebody might feel condemned okay or if i you know if 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 i'm witnessing and i get to the law which people have a tendency to avoid which makes the the gospel part pointless for you david when you hear the law and you are convicted of your sin where does that take you where do you go yeah you you go, you go straight to christ you know 
Yeah, you Straight run back to the cross. Jesus. Yep. You run back to Calvary. It, it take, the law takes us back to Christ as fast as we can go. So that's why we preach the law and the gospel. And sometimes that sermon might be all law, and, 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 and then we, 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 hopefully you have communion or something that's taking you to the gospel, to the, or you fill it out, you know, you, you add, add the gospel at the end of the sermon, whatever. And this sermon, this, this podcast may seem like a lot of, this is, seems like, this seems kind of legalistic. Legalistic technically means you think you're saved by following the law, which is not the case, as I have already explained. But, um, where was I going with that? It's total. We should call this the distraction episode. <laughs> um, we've covered uh, killing deer ethically, uh, and uh, and the Dominion mandate. Just follow the Dominion mandate. All right. No, you don't have to be one of the weird people with the twelve passenger vans. But let's aim to let's <laughs> aim to fill up our seven. Pa- how, how many? How, how many vehicle? How many? How many people can you fit in your in your? Um, uh, Tesla, uh, it's not homosexual mobile. Mobi- <laughs> what is it? It's a, it's a, it's a Land Rover. <laughs> it was a very nice car. I was no, actually, I was very impressed. It's a very nice vehicle. I, I insulted only now out of habit and yeah, feeling that, of it's, obligation. it's fine. Well, it's, it's 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 a very nice vehicle. Did I tell you the reason that I got that car? Have I told you that? I probably haven't said it on the podcast. Yes, yes, I think it was an inferiority complex. Yeah, I, yeah, I'm sure that's what I said. Yeah, <laughs> it was. I no, I, it's it, believe it or not, it's it's because one of one of the businesses that I do is a, a wedding. Uh, I have a wedding band, and like it or not, when you re, when you are looking for clients to play at their wedding, and I to wouldn't have thought that have entertainment. Uh, they're impressed my, by nice looking cars. My, they know you got it together. <laughs> My only experience with the wedding uh, wedding singers is like uh, for the the the, the, Sandler the Adam Sandler movie, yeah, <laughs> movie. Who's not driving a Range Rover, right? Land, Land Rover, which yeah, one is it? yeah. Our our uh, wedding band is expensive. Yeah, expensive. So, uh, I do me a favor. Explain put put that in a bullet point list and explain to my wife why I need a CTS Cadillac Coupe. <laughs> Um, yeah. because I, I would J- like one Jordan's starting a wedding band. That's how my, my message to, to your wife will go. Hey, Mandy, Jordan's starting a wedding band. I think she'd be like, uh, <laughs> have you heard, I've heard him sing on Sunday morning. I don't think that's happening. Here's the strange thing. I am the, by far the best singer in my house, except for my daughter. <laughs> that's scary. Like him time at, at our house would have you scr- like you'd, you, you would want, you would reconsider religions. Um, <laughs> I know a lot of bad singers. Yeah. So um, joyful noise. Praise the Lord. So Mike Stone dropped his lawsuit right. against uh, Russell Moore. I was very, I was very has, disappointed by this. This honestly, has Tom personally. Buck excited. So give us the down low on what the story is there, David. Well, basically, as far as I understand, um, Mike Stone had filed a defamation lawsuit against Russell Moore in relationship to the things that Moore had said around the meeting and, and bad things he had said about Stone. And then I, I don't think Russell Moore had ever responded at all to the lawsuit, at least not, not publicly and personally. And then Mike Stone decided to drop it. And then, of course, a bunch of uh, SBC pastors and go-along-to-get-along types run to Twitter to celebrate this oh, this is so good that he dropped a lawsuit against this brother in Christ and we're not supposed to be taking our, our issues out to the secular courts and da-da-da-da-da-da-da. And I'm, I'm pulling out what hair I have left watching this happen. Like, Russell Moore ain't a brother, you guys. There's no, princ- there's no biblical principle that, that stops us from suing um, unbelievers. Uh, zero. Zero. Yeah. Um, for, now... He's first of all, he's abandoned a, apparently the Baptist faith. Mm-hmm. Now I don't mean to say Presbyterians are not brothers, but he's one to abandon the faith, and furthermore, he's also proven himself one to f- lie about where he stands in his faith to be a Baptist for so long and then join a Presbyterian church. He described himself as a lifelong Baptist, like you know, like he was committed to being a Baptist, I'm not sure he ever even knew what that meant. So Which is he just, just looking for the church with the gayest pastor? Yeah, I guess it's just grifting, right? It's just moving. Where, where, whoever's going to give him an audience, whoever's going to give him a platform, whoever's going to ignore 
the the very clear signs of his um, non regeneration. We would accept Russell Moore into membership in our church. I'm pretty sure. But it would only be just so that we could then excommunicate him immediately. <laughs> but let's to be fair, Tom Buck has never ran across anyone who he considers to be not a Christian. Right. Right? Well, yeah. Except it, for except for me. I mean, I don't that that one time he's he's gotten beyond that and apologized. But I d I don't think that Tom Buck has I mean, Dwight McKissick is a Christian to Tom Buck. Tabidi. I mean, Tabidi. Bart Barber's a Christian compared to Tom Buck. Um, I mean, all these people are, if they claim, basically to Tom Buck, if they claim to be a Christian, they are, they are by default a Christian, right. which is woeful discernment because wolves in sheep's clothing come in sheep's clothing. Right. Right. Well, and I, and I don't like mind if it's somebody that I don't know online who says, you know, they confess Christ or they say I'm a Christian. I'll start off with that by default because I don't know them. But as soon as I, I start seeing evidence, you know, as soon as I start with, saying things that they say or do. I think we, I you know, think we differ with that. I take a neutral approach. Like, well, I, I, I don't, yeah, I don't, maybe, I don't run to the are. keyboard to, to fall all over myself saying, brother this, brother that, you know, look how much we have in common. I have no idea. You know, well, there's a, there's also a subtle trap to fall into, which like the, the AHA guys did the tried tried to do Fred Butler responded. Well, I learned from Fred on this. What they do is uh, they, they say, are you saying I'm not a Christian? Well, Fred did not say that they were not a Christian because of the church repent project or whatever else mm -hmm. they were getting into. Um. And Fred's like, it's not my job to determine whether or not you're a Christian. I don't have to say whether or not I think you're a Christian. Just because you say you're a Christian, I have to agree with you. And I thought about that, and I thought, and that's when I was still making up my mind about AHA, and I'm like, you know what? He's right. I, I am not forced to make a judgment call on someone's Christianity after having just met them or just heard a profession of faith come out of their mouth. Right. But when you are given overwhelming evidence that someone works for Satan, like Russell Moore, at that point, you should probably stop considering them a Christian. Call me crazy. Well, and it's probably so different then, if it's it, somebody. Is it 1 Corinthians 7, or do I, have my, do I have my chapters wrong? The don't sue the Christian part. Is it 1 Corinthians 7? I thought so. Um. Let's read it. I mean, we might as well. Uh, 1 Corinthians Seven court. Okay. Um uh first Corinthians uh don't on a second. Well why and why while you're looking at that up, I tend to approach it's it six. differently it's if, actually uh, six. First Corinthians six. I I tend to I tend to approach it uh very differently if it's somebody in my own church that's especially a member of the church. I'm gonna start oh, absolutely. Default, treating absolutely. them as a believer. Then, this then is talking about no, people there, over the Then internet, there's no you know? question because th by membership in your church, you are the entire church has vouched for that person's salvation. Right. Period. As much as we possibly can, right? As much as we can possibly determine, you know, assuming by, by somebody's with profession. Christ, with, with Christ as being uh, present uh, in the decision making. Right. We presume until we find out otherwise that they are a Christian, right? So that in the local church is, is different. But um, 1 Corinthians 6, 1 through 8 is what tells us not to file a lawsuit. Actually, let me read it to you. Dare any of you having a matter against another go to law before the unjust and not before the saints, which would apply a local church context because there was no concept of the presbytery back in the day. Um, the church is the court. It's the highest court on earth. Do you not? So like when people bring up Braxton Canner or some, the Dickinson church thing in which, by the way, I shut Ryan Cooney's mouth on Twitter when he's like, <laughs> tell me what this is about. And I'm like, 
Um, it's actually, it's all on video, which I guess I posted it on Facebook instead of YouTube, which was a major mistake was when they canceled my account, but I still have all the audio I, video. I'm going to have to put it back up on YouTube. That's that'll be a pain in the butt next week when I get around to that. But, um, it was actually because he called Trump the Messiah and I bled. It wasn't much, but it was a little blood on my hands. Um, I, there's pictures of it. So I am so proud to have bled for Christ. I mean, that was on my bucket list, right? Um, so uh, how did I get on that? Um, oh, when somebody brings that stuff up, I'm like, my church has cleared me of this. You, you can't outrage my church. We mm -hmm. dealt with this issue. That's why the church doesn't. That's why you don't just go to the elders and have the elders decide the matter. It's right. been dealt with. It can't be overruled. So like with my, and, and again, my attorney doesn't want me to talk too much because uh, Raph Graybills and Planned Parenthood and all their money is listening to this podcast uh, as soon as it goes live. But um, a summary judgment can be overturned to the Supreme Court. But even though that would be the cheaper way out and save me a lot of money, if I'm found innocent by a jury of my peers, that cannot be overturned. Um, well, hold on a second. I think my attorney said it's civil, so it's not criminal. So maybe it could be. Maybe it could be appealed. I don't know. I don't know how it works. This is why we know. hire lawyers. This is why <laughs> we hire lawyers. But the point is, do you not know that the saints will judge the world? Why are you unworthy of judging the smallest matters? So you take this to the court of the church, and you let the church make this decision. We're going to judge angels one day. And so why would we sue? We shouldn't be suing a fellow Christian, because that makes us look really stupid to the rest of the world as though we're not capable of handling our own business. And it, it reminds me of a couple things I've run into out in the, out in the real world. So first of all, like... Um, I had a tool, those with ears to hear, let them hear, stolen from my property, my recreational property, on the Indian res. Well, the law enforcement wants to know, why haven't you turned that in as theft? Because they know about it because of serial numbers on certain kinds of tools. And I'm like, you got to understand the culture. You don't go to the police when you can go to their grandmother because it's a matriarchal, you know, a native native tribe. When you go to their grandma and get it back or be compensated, right? So you, 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 don't, you, don't, you don't deal with it through the courts that way. That just makes, we can handle this as a community together. Or from what I've heard, now this I don't have personal experience in, but I've seen it in the movies, so it must be true, that Chinatown handles its own problems. Do you know this myth, David? Can you confirm this? I think it's more than a myth, but yeah. Does Denver have a Chinatown? Not officially. No? You don't segregate your Chinese into their own ghetto? No, they kind of go where they want. They're, you know, they're free. It's America. <laughs> hmm. One more reason not to move to but Colorado. The, the, the question... <laughs> The question we that make I had, ours, we make ours live in Butte, um, <laughs> close to the railroads. I'm just, I'm just, <laughs> just kidding. Great. There's the poll quote, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Clip that. Great. Being politically uh, uh, insensitive is not the same thing as, uh, excuse me, being racially insensitive is not the same thing as being racist. I just want to point out. Yes, it's but, true. That's true. Yeah, that was a joke. That was, take, <laughs> learn, learn how to take a joke. Well, the thing that, so, the thing that like I can't we have my... any Like we have any Chinese people. I do got like four, but, um, they, from the movies, as I understand it, you don't call the police in Chinatown. They will take care of their own business. Is that right? Is that the gist? Yeah, that's the gist, you know, in the, in the you know, subcultures and, and, you know, different boroughs and, and different, different, you know, kind of ethnic and cultural enclaves of large cities that that's often the case. But the thing that I can't figure out about what we're, what we're, to, to get back to what we're talking about here, the thing I can't 
Like how, how would, let's just but say it you would assume. Make the, hold on a second though. The point the, to help you segue, it's to help you segue. Okay. The point is it makes the entire community look bad when we have to call out, call the outside forces to judge the matter. But when dealing with Russell Moore, now you can segue. Yeah. Well, it's two components. It's not only what I argue he's dealing with an unbeliever, but he's dealing Clearly. with it, it, an enemy ass- of the cross. Yeah. And if you, assu- even if you assumed he was a believer, how would you, I mean, what would he say, well, take this to Russell Moore's elders? Like what, what church is going to receive that accusation from across the country? I don't know. You know, would, would, would the elders of that church then have to dig into the legality of whether he was really defamed or not? It's, you know, the impracticality of it is, is pretty substantial. And this is what, when Doug Wilson criticized this lawsuit when it first came out, that's one of the things he said to basically undermine Baptist polity entirely. Well, you're autonomous, so you can't possibly met out these problems from this guy over here in this church and this guy over Which here in this church. Which is bull crap because we yeah. can, because we cooperate together. So I can guarantee you that if there's a church, say, up in Canada that has a problem with something, they can bring the matter to us. So here's how this works case you're unaware and then we'll get to we'll just say goodbye to the non-patrons and well no we have some questions we have enough do we have enough questions for the regular portion and enough know, for yeah, this? we're getting we're getting to the conclusion of that this is we're going on 40 minutes now okay so we'll call it call it and then let the freeloaders go freeload yeah, somewhere and else we, and we do love the freeloaders go, you know, go listen don't send me go listen mail. to the go <laughs> listen to the marcel podcast uh, and listen to all the people who enabled and helped marcel uh yeah have you been listening to that it's like i'm not a christianity no, absolutely straight fan, not obviously but have i've been I listening. Have to listen to that there you could not pay me to listen i've been, to I've been listening so. to it because i'm an idiot so well what's your what's your take Give us your view. Uh, it's obviously, I think that the the general perspective of those producing the podcast is far more left lefty than I am. Um, but it's it's an interest because I I'm interested in, in ecclesiology generally, in methodology, you know, church methodology generally. It's interesting to me to see because if I was to take Mark Driscoll and say, here's where he really aired, it's not everywhere that he aired, but it doesn't take everywhere, right? A little leaven is all it takes. So it's, it's, I've, I've found it kind of interesting. What are the major mistakes? Was it a God complex? Was it a celebrity yeah, I'm, complex? I'm, I'm, I'm still it? halfway through it, but yeah, it became a, you know, I, the same as a lot of other mega church pastors. It became, I'm, I'm the visionary. It's my way or the highway that he didn't have any, it didn't seem like he had any sort of goalposts or, or, you know, uh, it barriers. It doesn't seem that he, you know, in well, terms back of to Baptist, back to Baptist the, uh, polity, that's, that's Calvary chapel. Mm-hmm. Um, um, ecclesiology. It's the Moses model. Right. Absolutely. And, and so many, so many would be or purported Baptist churches employ that, even though that's not Baptist polity, you know? And so I, I find myself extra sensitive to it a lot of the time when people are claiming, um, some sort of extra biblical authority for a select group of people in the church or they're, or they're claiming, Hey, we don't have to be open and transparent with the congregation because we know Baptists choose their leaders. Yeah. Right. Right. That's the So tradition. years ago, a woman came to me, I mean, years ago, like before I came to Montana, she had a problem with the dentist's office, his business and how they were caring for her and billing her and so forth. And the question was, can he, now he's a Christian goes to the first Baptist church in town. And I, was pastor of the Baptist church out in the country. Can she sue him? And I said, no, but I gave you permission to sue the business. Because how is the business to be represented within the local church? I don't know. That's the difference between morality and ethics. Ethics, you got to work out the morality. Um, But in the case of Russell Moore, the only question to be asked is, see a brother in Christ. And dear gosh, people, would you recognize who the enemy is? I mean, the tweet I just got, I, I, I texted. I mean, I tweeted right before uh, I got on the program uh, with Michael O'Fallon. And O'Fallon says, um, no, maybe not. I probably can't pull it up right away. O'Fallon gives a list of all the bad guys, and I added one to that, uh, which is Tom Schreiner. Uh, who is always standing in the back on the periphery. So there's this famous uh, extra in the movie. 
in the movies. He's a fat kid, red face, black curly hair, and he is like in every movie from the 90s up. No speaking parts. But he's in all these freaking movies. And he's famous for it. And you'll recognize, you would write, if I showed you a picture of him, David, can you pull that up on your screen? Look up famous, most famous extra. I'm making a point here. (laughs) Most famous extra. Don't make us both Google it. I'm trying to make a point. Most famous. (laughs) Is it this kid? Extra. (laughs) Yep. That's the one. He's in freaking everything. That's awesome. (laughs) <laughs> all right and no speaking he's always like standing in the back with a dixie cup like at a party or something he looks like um, that's tom shriner i added tom shriner to that list from southern baptist theological seminary he is in the middle of everything bad in every situation where there is repugnancy to the lord jesus tom shriner is there in the background I've pointed this out. I don't think anyone else has pointed this out. This needs to be pointed out. Maybe somebody with a little bit more knowledge about what's going on at Southern than than yours truly. But it's at this point, unfortunately, in the podcast, because we are capitalists who have to get by. Um, and uh, we would encourage you to join the patron portion of the podcast for five ninety five a month. You get the entire podcast in which we're going to keep talking and uh, about this and questions sent in by our patron supporters. Now, if you have a question about how you can know Jesus uh, as your savior or have a question about how you can find a good church, email me, JD, at pulpitandpin.org. If you have any other question, I don't have time to talk to you. Um, no offense. I'm busy. Um, if it catches my interest, I might, I might email, but I might email you back, but you'll probably get like a nice response from my secretary or something. Um, join us on Patreon so that we can interact and better yet, instead of just getting the full podcast for five ninety five a month and also the insurgency, which everybody should sign up for it's seven bucks. So it saves you two bucks. You get it for free. 15 news links, banned news links every day. Um, sent to your email inbox. Um, you get that for nineteen ninety five a month. You can join us for the Bulldogmatic Bible Study. Just listen to the last program to find out what that's about. Thirty four ninety five a month. We got a gift for you. Forty nine ninety five a month. Get a book sent to you in the mail every single month uh, from yours truly that I pick out. And uh, we would encourage you to be generous and morally support that which you or financially support that which you morally support. But as always, give locally, faithfully, regularly, generously, and without coercion, but with joy to your local New Testament church long before you give to any kind of chair, a parachurch ministry like this one. But uh, if you can show some love, show some love, please. In the meantime, God bless you. We'll talk to you later, freeloaders. Um, If my voice still works after this surgery that I have tomorrow. God bless you all. Talk to you later. Until then, as always, Semper Reformanda. We are the news source that will tell you the truth, no matter what. We are the ones who haunt the dreams of big tech gatekeepers who throttle free speech. We are the ones who have survived boycotts, blacklists, embargoes, and truth blockades. We are the ones who are still protesting. We are Protestia. Check us out online at protestia.com.